You know what, today I'm in the mood for an episode of What's in That Pile at its most basic, so I hope you'll forgive me if I'm just gonna dig in here, grab a piece of wood that strikes my fancy, and turn it into a vase. When it comes to woodworking, it's the thing that I enjoy doing most, so let's get to it. What's in that pile? Ah. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know what? I wanna do this one. If this log looks familiar to you, then thank you so much for watching my fur tip slushy video from last week. But if you didn't catch it, that's okay. It's a very cool one where I went up and explored a nearby avalanche debris field to find some fur wood to make into a goblet to serve fur needle slushy out of. And one of the pieces of wood I found for that video was really cool, but not the right candidate to make a goblet out of. And well, here we are already back at this piece of wood and I wanna turn it into a vase. This log is from a subalpine fir, Abies lasiocarpa, which is probably my favorite fir tree. There are these really charming, tall, skinny things that grow in some of the harshest places on earth. Again, this is one that came down in a big avalanche this past winter, and there's a lot of cool stuff going on in here. Some bends, some really interesting little branches, and I think that for a tree that's not prized for its wood, we might find some really cool stuff inside. So after cutting off a few of those extra branch bits and getting it mounted up onto the lathe, it's now time to roughly turn this uneven log into something resembling more of a cylinder. Now the more laborious roughing part of this process was made extra interesting this time by just how resinous this wood was. The avalanche that toppled this tree was only a handful of months ago, so it hasn't been dead for very long, and its bark was just chock full of these tiny resin deposits. You can see some of them right there just under the outer layer of bark. Every single one of those little dots sent resin splattering all over the place. My arms, my hands, the lathe, my tool. It was a real mess, but one that smelled amazing. Okay, so while I work through this, I hope you'll allow me a little rambling time. I'm getting close to my first year making content on YouTube. This is the 17th episode of What's in That Pile, the 35th full-length YouTube video that I've made, and of course I've made a lot of YouTube shorts, but that's just this platform. You see, I got my start over on TikTok where I was making much simpler content than a lot of you are probably used to seeing from me. And it was primarily stuff just like this. I would grab a piece of wood that I found interesting, turn it into a vase and maybe talk a little bit about the tree, share some facts, and try to show off some neat looking wood. And it makes sense that that's where I'd start because at that time I was just a guy who was working a normal desk job, uh, got curious about and kind of obsessed with trees, and picked up some tree related hobbies as a result, like foraging and using trees in recipes and baking, and also trying to see what the wood from different trees looked like, and thus tinkering around with woodworking and making vase was really just the perfect outlet for me to be able to do exactly that. Because again, I didn't pick up woodworking first. I wasn't someone who got into it to learn how to make really intricate pieces of furniture or super elaborate carvings or really anything like that at all. Like the first things I ever made out of wood were literally me just grabbing small limbs from trees I found interesting and cutting them into tiny little slabs just so I could see what their wood looked like. So yeah, vases became like a more fun version of those tiny little slabs. You see, like on a lathe, if you want to make bowls, you ideally need a really big piece of wood since you're going to have to cut it in half first and still have enough wood left over for a good sized bowl. If you're more interested in furniture building or carpentry, then you're going to need properly milled and seasoned wood, which again means you're going to need much larger species of trees and it's going to limit what you're going to be able to work with. Hand carving stuff like spoons and other things is a lot of fun and you can use a lot of different types of wood for that. Uh, but yeah, for me, there's just nothing quite like being able to grab a dead piece of avalanche debris from a tree that I love and admire like the subalpine fir and tossing on my lathe and not worrying if the wood is green or dry or kind of cracked or not, full of imperfections or clean as a whistle, just throwing it on there and being able to dive right in and make something out of it. Yeah, it's just very quickly being able to use woodworking to do the thing that I love the most, which is learn more about trees, smelling what the wood smells like, how much it differs from or is similar to a tree growing just a few feet over from it, covering my hands in sap and shavings, feeling how the fiber is cut differently, and of course what kind of interesting grain and knots and coloring is hiding from one species of wood to the next. 
I don't need full-grown trees. I can scrounge and forage, take pruned limbs from a curbside trash pile, sustainably harvest from deadfall instead of relying on lumber sourced from a clear-cut forest. Hopefully you understand what I'm getting at here because this is mostly a preamble for something I want to say to a certain type of audience that always seems to find these vase videos and that's an audience I'm going to call functionality absolutists. This is a type of audience that, upon seeing one of these videos of me making a vase out of a piece of wood, chooses to leave comments telling me that I've just made something useless or wasted their time, or sometimes they urge me to hollow out the vase to make it useful, or urge me to make something more practical or interesting for them to watch instead. Now these comments are of course in the minority, but I've gotten a lot of them over the years whenever I've made a vase video, and I'd be lying if I said they weren't always ringing in my ears every time I pick up the camera to make a new video and feel like making a vase. So what did I mean by functionality absolutists? Uh, this to me is the type of audience that every time they consume content in which someone makes something, they've been trained to expect to see something either uniquely or interestingly functional or highly valuable. And yeah, of course this makes sense in a world where our attention is the most valuable currency. You know, of course to draw us in or keep our attention, we need to be promised a big payoff. Our attention is valuable, so it's going to take something big to earn it. Now, to be clear, what I am not saying here is that a video that's just me making a simple subalpine fur vase should be just as every bit as grabby and captivating to your attention as, I don't know, making a map of the U.S. out of native trees or handcrafting something really awesome and gorgeous and intricate like a cedar strip canoe or building a guitar or promising you that what you're about to see me make is going to be something that's, that someone paid $50,000 for or something like that. Of course, when it comes to turning making stuff into content, some things are going to be more interesting and more likely to grab and keep your attention than other things. And those things are typically going to be things that are more functional and intricate and interesting. But what I fear when I read those comments saying effectively that these wooden vases are useless and pointless isn't that it's not grabbing people's attention. It's that I worry people feel that making something themselves is now also only worthwhile so much as it either has functionality or monetary value. Because now, for more and more of us, our primary access point to making things is in watching other people make things online. And to me, there are few things I believe to be more important than creating something for the sheer sake of creating something. Not to sell it, not in the hopes that it'll be a side hustle someday, not because it's going to be useful or help you accomplish a task, but just because you want to try and make something. Whether it's a drawing or painting, even though you don't know how to draw or paint very well, uh, writing a poem that nobody but you will ever read, grabbing some different species of tall grasses and weeds and braiding them together just to see a multicolored braid made out of plants before you toss it back to the ground, picking up a piece of wood and carving it into something like a simple disc or a triangle shape just to see what the wood looks like and how it feels to carve it into a weird shape. I worry we've been so wired to think that making and creating is only meant for functionality, then almost none of us are making things with no readily apparent functionality anymore. It's either spend your time producing something commodifiable or blow off steam by consuming. And yeah, I just don't think that's how we're meant to operate. I think it's hugely important for you and your mental health to make stuff that doesn't serve an apparent purpose. It's not meant to be anything other than something you've made. So yeah, that's my encouragement for you today. Try making something just for the sake of making it. Whether that means trying something brand new or using a skill you've honed for years just to goof off and make something for the sheer joy of it. And if you can find the time to do that as many days as you can, I think you'll be surprised at the outcome. Okay, sorry, that was a long and rambling rant, uh, but I just couldn't shake that idea the whole time I was making and filming this, so I don't know. If this was annoying, you probably stopped watching minutes ago anyway, so thanks for sticking by me. Okay, let's get back to the vase that I've actually been making this entire time. 
I am really glad I gave myself permission to do this. Uh, these days I pretty much only ever make something if I'm filming it. So yeah, that whole rant was clearly me mostly talking to myself first and foremost. So yeah, it was really fun to be able to just make a vase and play around with a new shape and form. And I'm really happy with how this one turned out. The subalpine fir is a really tall and skinny looking tree and I was looking to emulate that in the final shape of this vase, accentuating the height with a long and extra skinny neck, tapering that down to a long and skinny base as well. And there's also just some really cool stuff going on in the wood. Uh, again, this is just further vindication that grabbing interesting native trees that aren't really used for woodworking is a lot of fun. And yes, even here in a plain old piece of subalpine fir wood, I'm seeing some figure shimmering and shining in there. I'm not going to leave you all hanging. It's some lovely subalpine chatoyancy. I also love that there's some inner bark left right here where you can see some of those little resin pockets that made this vase the messiest project I've had in a long, long time. You know what, I've talked for like two years now about how much I want to make a vase out of every species of tree native to my home state, so who knows, maybe this will be vase number one. For now, let's let this one join the juniper stump bowl on the coffee table where it's just going to sit there being functionless and fantastic. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. What's in that pile?